year was 1974 and the location was an old traditional farming village named Lu Liao Zhuang in Nanyang County in the southern part of China's Henan province. All 600 people in the village were farmers and still are to this day. They mostly cultivated potatoes, corn, and wheat. They also grew cabbages and other kinds of root vegetables. A family of seven lived there in a simple structure made out of compacted dried mud. The roof was made from straw. The rain always managed to find the holes in the roof, while in the winter the icy winds never failed to blow through the gaps in the walls. When the temperatures dropped to below freezing, the family burned leftover corn husks to keep warm. They couldn't afford coal. At that time, the father and head of the family was sick. He suffered from a severe type of asthma, which developed into lung cancer. The cancer then spread to his stomach. The doctor told him he could not be cured and would soon die. His wife was told, there's no hope for your husband. Go home and prepare for his death. Every night, father lay in bed and could hardly breathe. His sickness sapped all of their money, possessions, and energy. They hoped the father would get better, but his condition worsened. The mother was under great pressure, facing the daunting prospect of raising five children alone. She didn't know what would happen to them if father died. Things were so hopeless that she even contemplated suicide. One night, she was in bed, barely awake. Suddenly, she heard a very clear and tender, compassionate voice say, Jesus loves you. This immediately took her back to her youth. In the 1940s, a Western missionary preached the gospel to her. She was 20 years old at the time. Although she didn't fully understand, she was deeply impressed by what she heard. She especially liked to sing the songs and hear the Bible stories shared by the small teams of evangelists who traveled around the countryside. Soon she started attending church and committed her life to Jesus Christ. However, things changed. China became a communist nation in 1949. Within a few years, all missionaries were expelled, church buildings were closed, and thousands of Chinese pastors were imprisoned. Many lost their lives. Mother saw the missionaries leave Nanyang in the early 1950s. She never forgot the tears in their eyes as they headed for the coast under armed guard, their ministries for the Lord having abruptly come to an end. In just one city in China, Wenzhou, in the Zhejiang province, 49 pastors were sent to prison labor camps near the Russian border in 1950. Many were given sentences of up to 20 years for their crimes of preaching the gospel. Of those 49 pastors, just one returned home. 48 died in prison. In the area of Nanyang, believers were crucified on the walls of their churches for refusing to deny Christ. Others were chained to vehicles and horses and dragged to their death. One pastor was bound and attached to a long rope. The authorities used a makeshift crane to lift him high into the air. Before hundreds of witnesses, the pastor was asked one last time by his persecutors if he would recant. He shouted back, No, I will never deny the Lord who saved me. The rope was released and the pastor crashed to the ground below. Upon inspection, the tormentors discovered the pastor was not fully dead. So they raised him up into the air for a second time, dropping the rope to finish him off for good. In this life, the pastor was dead, but he lives on in heaven with the reward of one who is faithful until the end. During these difficult times, the small fledgling church in the family's hometown of Nanyang was scattered. They were like sheep without shepherds. Mother also left the church, over the following decades having been completely starved of all Christian fellowship and without God's word, she forgot most of what she had learned as a young woman. Her relationship with the Lord grew cold. But now she knelt down on the floor and tearfully repented of her sins and rededicated herself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like the prodigal son, mother came home to God. She immediately called her family to come and pray to Jesus. She told everyone Jesus is the only hope for Father. All of them committed their lives to God when they heard what had happened. They then laid hands on Father and for the rest of the night cried out a simple prayer, Jesus, heal Father. Jesus, heal Father. The very next morning, Father felt much better. 
For the first time in months, he had an appetite for food. Within a week, he'd recovered completely and had no trace of cancer. It was a great miracle from God. They experienced revival in the family and all their lives took a drastic change. The parents were so grateful to God for what he had done that they immediately wanted to share the good news with everyone else in the village. In those days, it was illegal to hold any meetings or public gatherings, but the parents came up with a plan. They sent their children to invite relatives and friends to their home. Many people came without knowing the reason why they'd been summoned. Many presumed father must have died, and so they came dressed for the funeral. They were amazed to see father greet them at the door, apparently in good health. When all the relatives and friends had arrived, the family asked them all to come inside the house. They locked the door and covered the windows and explained how father had been completely healed by praying to Jesus. All the relatives and friends knelt down on the floor and gladly accepted Jesus as Lord and Master. These were exciting times. Now here's the testimony of their 16-year-old son, Yun. I didn't really know who Jesus was, but I'd seen him heal my father and liberate our family. I confidently committed myself to the God who had healed my father and saved us. During that time, I frequently asked my mother who Jesus truly was. She told me Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for us, taken all our sins and sicknesses. He recorded all his teachings in the Bible. I asked if there were any words of Jesus left that I could read for myself. She replied, no, all his words are gone. There is nothing left of his teaching. This was during the Cultural Revolution when Bibles could not be found. Life was not just difficult for Christians. Mao launched an experiment called the Great Leap Forward, which led to a massive famine all over China. It was actually a great leap backwards for the nation. In the Henan province, it was estimated that 8 million people starved to death. From that day on, I earnestly wanted to have a copy of my own Bible. Only a few old believers could recall seeing Bibles many years before. I was so hungry for a Bible. Seeing my desperation, my mother remembered an old man who lived in another village. This man had been a pastor before the Cultural Revolution. Together we started out on the long walk to his home. When we found him, we told him our desire. We longed to see a Bible. Do you have one? He immediately looked fearful. This man had already spent nearly 20 years in prison for his faith. He looked at me and saw that I was so young and poor, with tattered clothes and bare feet. He felt compassion, but still didn't want to show me his Bible. If caught with a Bible, it would be burned and the owner's whole family would be severely beaten in the middle of the village. The old pastor simply told me, the Bible is a heavenly book. If you want one, you'll need to pray to the God of heaven. Only He can provide you a heavenly book. God is faithful. He always answers those who seek Him with all their heart. I fully trusted the pastor's words. When I returned home, I knelt down every evening for prayer. I had just one simple prayer. Lord, please give me a Bible. Amen. At that time, I didn't know how to pray, but I continued for more than one month. Nothing happened. I went back to that pastor's house again. This time I went alone. I told him, I've prayed to God according to your instructions, but I still haven't received the Bible I want so much. Please, please show me your Bible. Just a glance and I will be satisfied. The pastor saw the anxiety of my heart. He spoke to me again. If you're serious, then you should not only kneel down and pray to the Lord, you should also fast and weep. The more you weep, the sooner you'll get a Bible. I went home and every morning and afternoon I ate and drank nothing. Every evening I ate just one small bowl of steamed rice. I cried like a hungry child to his heavenly father wanting to be filled with his word. For the next 100 days I prayed for a Bible until I could bear it no more. My parents were sure I was losing my mind. Then suddenly one morning at 4 a.m. after months of begging God to answer my prayers, I received a vision from the Lord while kneeling beside my bed. In the vision, I was walking up a steep hill, trying to push a heavy cart in front of me. I was struggling greatly because in my vision I was hungry and weakened by constant fasting. The old cart was about to roll back and fall on me. I then saw three men walking down the hill in the opposite direction. A kind old man who had a very long beard 
was pulling a large cart full of fresh bread. Two other men were walking on each side of the cart. When the old man saw me, he felt great pity and showed me compassion. He asked, are you hungry? I replied, yes, I have nothing to eat. I'm on my way to get food for my family. I wept because my family was extremely poor. Because of my father's sickness, we'd sold everything valuable to buy medicine. We had little to eat. When the old man asked me if I was hungry, I couldn't help but cry. I'd never felt such genuine love and compassion from anyone before. In the vision, the old man took a red bag of bread from his trolley and asked his two servants to give it to me. He said, you must eat it immediately. I opened the wrapping and saw there was a bun of fresh baked bread inside. When I put the bun in my mouth, it instantly turned into a Bible. Immediately in my vision, I knelt down with my Bible and cried out to the Lord in thanksgiving. Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. You didn't despise my prayer. You allowed me to receive this Bible. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. I woke up and started searching the house for the Bible. The rest of my family was asleep. The vision had been so real to me that when I realized it had only been a dream, I was deeply anguished and I wept loudly. My parents rushed to my room to see what had happened. They thought I'd gone crazy because of all my fasting and praying. I told them about my vision, but the more I shared, the crazier they thought I was. Mother said, the day hasn't dawned yet and no one has come to our house. The door is firmly locked. My father held me tightly with tears in his eyes. He cried to God, Dear Lord, have mercy on my son. Please don't let him lose his mind. Please give my son a Bible. My mother, father, and I knelt down and wept together, arm in arm. Suddenly, I heard a faint knock at the door. A very gentle voice called my name. I rushed over and asked through the locked door, Are you bringing the bread to me? The gentle voice replied, Yes, we have a bread feast to give you. I immediately recognized the voice as the same one I had heard in the vision. I quickly opened the door, and there standing before me were the same two servants I had seen in the vision. One man held a red bag in his hand. My heart raced as I opened the bag and held in my hands my very own Bible. The two men quickly departed into the still darkness. I clutched my new Bible to my heart and fell down on my knees outside the door. I thanked God again and again. I promised Jesus that from that moment on I would devour his word like a hungry child. Later I found out the names of those two men. One was Brother Wang and the other Brother Sung. They came from a village far away. They told me about an evangelist whom I'd never met. He had suffered terribly for the Lord during the Cultural Revolution and had nearly died while being tortured. About three months before I received my Bible, this evangelist had received a vision from the Lord. God showed him a young man to whom he was to give his hidden Bible. In the vision, he saw our house and the location of our village. Like many Christians at the time, the old man had placed his Bible inside a can and buried it deep in the ground, hoping a day would come when he could dig it up and read it again. Despite this vision, it took the evangelist a few months before he decided to obey what the Lord had told him to do. He asked two other Christian men to deliver it to me. They then walked throughout the night to reach my home. From that moment on, I prayed to Jesus with faith-filled prayers. I fully trusted that the words in the Bible were God's words to me. I always held the Bible. Even when I slept, I laid it on my chest. I devoured its teachings like a hungry child. This was the first gift I ever received from God in prayer. This would just be the beginning for Brother Yun, who would go on to become a prominent Chinese house church leader. His autobiography tells of the series of miracles and hardships that follow Yun during his mission for Christ. He was repeatedly beaten, tortured, and imprisoned for many years for the sake of the gospel. Jesus never left him, and the hardships were accompanied by many miracles and many souls won to Christ. I share my testimony that Brother Yun's story is true. Although I never doubted a word of it, the Holy Spirit continuously confirmed event after event after event really happened while I was reading it. I marveled at the conviction with which the Holy Spirit grasped me. I have since discovered that many have falsely accused Brother Yun of making it all up. This is touched on some in the book. Despite multiple eyewitnesses testifying on Brother Yun's behalf, 
Men who were not there and who've never met him have begun slinging mud at this dear brother. Sadly, but unsurprisingly, his attackers are professing Christians. Many simply do not believe that God could perform such miracles. One of the criticisms against Yun is how closely some of his experiences mirror those recorded in the Bible. How ironic for professing Christians to reject a fellow brother's testimony on the grounds that it sounds too much like the God of the Bible. Lord have mercy. For anyone interested in reading Yun's autobiography, it is called The Heavenly Man. This nickname of The Heavenly Man is not one that he picked out for himself, as he is very humble. The book is centered on Jesus, who is the star of every story worth telling. The nickname was given to Yun as a result of an event you can read about in the book. You will be blessed by the words he shares, which reveal many truths about our Father in Heaven. And you will be comforted to know that when persecution heats up, so does the Holy Spirit burning within us. May God bless you and lead you.